Hey everyone, I am going to show you how to use the library's website. To get to the library's website, you can either have it bookmarked in your browser or you can go to the asutr.edu website, scroll all the way down, and click on library. As you scroll down, you can see our hours of operation, newly arrived books or DVDs in our collection, and then we have some areas you can search by. So, first off, we're just going to start with some simple searches. So, you're going to go into your one search bar, which is going to search all the databases. Um, let's search. Um, Yes, prices. So right now I have 1.3 million hits. Now that's a lot of stuff to go through, so we want to narrow this down. The left side of your screen is going to be your best friend for any type of database. So here we want to look at format. Um, let's say I just want an article. Click that. Doesn't go down substantially, but we're almost there. Uh, let's see. I don't want any chapters. And then we can go to full text, which brings it down significantly. Getting a full text article is easier if the article is older. If it's newer, you're not going to be able to find it 99% of the time because there's an embargo on it. An embargo means that the publisher postpones the online print within a year. It's usually a year. Um, and that's because they want you to buy the print version first. So for instance, People Magazine, they would print their issue, but if you tried to find the um, May 2022 edition online, you're not going to be able to find it because they want you to purchase it and print first. Another thing that's important is sometimes professors ask for peer-reviewed or scholarly articles. You can click down here. Uh, quick little tip, if you need scholarly articles, I would use JSTOR, it's J-S-T-O-R. All of those articles are scholarly, so you don't have to pick and choose or um, be cautious of what you're using. JSTOR is a great place to start. For example, I'm gonna show you how to search for JSTOR or a database in particular. You can either click on this guy or you can scroll down and click here. Either one works. Then in your search bar, you're going to start typing in the database or the type of subject matter that you'd like to look up. Click on the link and there you have it. There's something called open access where a lot of databases are giving free access to any educational institution. So just because your teacher didn't tell you to use um, ProQuest doesn't mean you can't use ProQuest. Um, so I go on. Um, publication year, let's just say five years. Okay, we got it down to 2000. Now, I can narrow it down a little bit further by saying I just want English. And if necessary, I can narrow it down from database. So here it shows all the databases that we have access to. And in the parentheses, it shows how many articles are in each database. So obviously, WorldCat has the most, ProQuest is in second so on and so forth. So it all depends on what you are looking for in gas prices. 
I'm just going to say this is a regular comp one. So um, we're just going to do it for an English paper. Let's see. This first one looks nice. Let's click on it. Now some important things to note here. One, you have your summary, which is important because you can see what the article is about before having to read the whole entire thing. If the article sounds interesting and close to your topic, then you might want to proceed. If not, go to the next one. It doesn't always have to be the number one article that you choose. It can be the tenth. So don't judge a book by its cover. Go through a couple pages. Also, subjects. This part's really cool because even if this article is not what you're looking for, it might have some subject matter that you haven't thought of. So we can do gas prices, gas prices and occupational safety, gas prices and cost reduction, so on and so forth. So it gives you more subjects to look through for your paper. Um, if you see something you like, you can just click it and it will start searching all of those resources with gas prices and the subject of petroleum refineries. And it shows you right there. So that's one cool thing the subjects can do. If we scroll down even more, you can see what database it's in. It's in ProQuest. Um, if you need to do a DOI, you've got the ISSN right here. Most um, articles from the database will help you cite it. You can also try this guy right here. Click on the different citation that you want, and there it goes. It's very important that you inspect the citation especially because when you copy and paste it, sometimes this italic might not paste the right way. So it's always good to check over your citations. So let's go ahead and view full text. All right, so we are lucky it has the full text available for you. Um, now some people like to save the link, which is fine, but I suggest downloading it because it might not be there tomorrow. You never know. Um, this article is from 2018. It might stay up there for a while, but if you're talking about 2000 and before, they could take off the article at any point. So you can click on full text article. Uh, sometimes the PDF viewer does not work on my computer. I don't know why. But another thing you can do is you can download it. If the download button does not work, which sometimes it does, you can go to print. You can do the full citation, which I, I suggest because more information is better than nothing. Um, page break after each document, that's just a, a settings thing, doesn't really matter. And you can include recent searches. So it sort of keeps a record of what you've searched. You can hit continue. And here, you can just act like you're printing it, but you can do save as PDF. And then you will have your article. So that's pretty cool. And also, like I said, we've got our saved searches right here. Um, not all databases will do this. This is special to ProQuest. But the rest of this, this is good. You've got full text scholarly journal, 
you've got your information for your citation and then there's your article you've also got your details which is good because then you can find other articles like this article um, based on different subject matter so here is the main page for the professional safety journal here we can see that it's peer-reviewed it has a full text coverage but only from 1987 to the present sometimes the full coverage will be such and such date till 2010 but your abstract and citation will be till the present that means that you're not going to have access to the full text. It will only give you the citation. Um, if you want to know even further, you can click on more about publication. It might have information about the embargo and whatnot, so you can see what information you have access to. Um, it also might have the main uh, page that is connected to the organization. So if you are more, if you're interested in the American Association of Safety Engineers, you can just click on this guy. Now when you scroll down, you'll see that next to the articles it says full text. Um, sometimes they might have an unlocked symbol. Um, that also means that they are available. Sometimes it'll have a locked symbol or it'll say abstract citation. Another way to see if the article is full text is if you look down below and it shows you you have access to full text. Um, you can also, if you have a journal that you would like to use, but you're not necessarily sure about what article you want to use. You want, you want the journal, but you're not sure about the article. You can do search within this publication. So I'll just type in gas and then it searches the whole entire publication based on what you wrote. So then you can look through and again you can click on the details for the summary or the abstract to see if it's something you like and you can also pay attention to the bottom or the side to see if it's full text or not okay here's here's an example of a citation or abstract it has it right here and then if you look down below it has it right here so this is an article that you would not have access to it is pretty old. But again, if this is a type of article that you really, really want, um, you can look at the different subject matter. Uh, I don't know what classification is. Uh, I guess it goes by the safety handbook. Um, if that's something that you're interested in, you can definitely click on those. Uh, you can also look to the right and it has suggested resources so you don't have access to this but you really want something like it ProQuest has already come up with a couple of ideas for you and it also has something that you can search with indexing terms which is basically subject matter terms click on it and search and it'll give you more articles that are about your subject, but it will not be within the publication. So I'm no longer in my fire safety journal, but I am in a search about fire protection now. Here it is. So here's the little lock that I showed you. Um, that means open access. Like I said before, the open resource, um, the OER, that means that it, it's accessible to everybody. So it shares all the love. Another thing to look at while you're looking through resources is down below, it says newspaper, scholarly journal, 
so on and so forth. So if you have not used your left hand buddy yet, you can see below what type of journal or article they are, depending on what your teacher has assigned to you. Um, I can do the same thing with Gale. I know a lot of places or classes require you to use Gale. You can go to databases and just hover over it and click on Gale databases. This, it has its own little one search specifically for Gale and it'll search all of, it, of their different databases. So, okay, we'll go to Fine Arts. All right, now with Gale, Gale has its own little unique cool things that it does. If you look down here below, we've got Topic Finder and Subject Guide. If you go to Topic Finder, it's got this cool little, um, I don't even know what to call it. Um, it calls it tiles. So let's type in a topic for it. Uh, I want to do postmodern. All right, so the tiles are a little hard to understand, so I like going to the wheel. Now with the wheel, it's pretty self-explanatory. You go to the biggest subject first, so depending on what you're researching, um, I'm gonna go to postmodern. Then I can go to, let's see, church and dance and it narrows down. Dance. From here, I've got five different results for postmodern and dance. So that's one way how to narrow down your searches. It's uh, easier on the eyes. Um, again, it probably would give you more searches if you're using the search bar, but this is a great way to start. And again, you can use your little tips and tricks with the subjects and finding more articles that are common or close to the article that you've chosen. Now, subject guide. Here again, I'll do this again. All right, so now we've got sort of a definition of what postmodernism is. If we click on subdivision, it'll give us different areas of postmodernism to look at. So if you want to write a paper about postmodernism, but you're not exactly sure what, you can look here and see, oh, well, analysis has 54 results versus appreciation. So I might want to do the analysis of postmodernism. You can also use this little search guy for locations. So that obviously is the world. Um, so if you want to do postmodernism in Japan, it'll give you some articles. We've got eight. And um, like before, down here it shows if it's a full text or a citation only. Unfortunately, these are all citation onlys. But if you look at the date, there's a reason why. It's from 1988, so most likely there, it's going to be very hard to find these articles. If you have something newer, it's much easier. If it's current, it'll be a tad bit harder to find. But again, we can just click on it and you've got your related subjects. So you can click on that, you can explore some of the subjects. It also gives you an option to enter a library loan. That means that we can borrow articles from other schools. It is not a guarantee that we can get the articles. 
Um, some schools charge for the articles and we do not. So um, we would hope that the other library would reciprocate to our rules. Um, sometimes the libraries just don't have it because it's so old that they don't have access to it. Um, again, you have access to a citation, uh, but make sure that you check your citations because it may be formatted differently when you copy and paste. Now, publication search. If you know what publication you want to look for, you can go here. So if I want, Ooh, what's after image? This sounds fun. I'm gonna click on that. It's gonna go to the publication main page. It's gonna show me how many items it has and what its full coverage is. And if you click on the little question mark, Sometimes it explains that it may not be available because of embargoes. So that's just kind of a statement. You can click here and search from 1984 all the way to 2021. Some dates might be skipped because of publisher agreements. Um, it's something that you cannot help. Let's see, let's do 2016, March. All right, um, very similar to ProQuest. We've got our peer reviewed right here, our article right here. Um, this is a little different from ProQuest. It shows you how many words. I don't know if um, your professors require you to pick something that has a certain word count or not, but it's there if you need it, and it also has its date span, so that's really cool. Um, here, you can narrow it down by subject, document type, da 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 Let's say we want to view only full text. That narrows it down to 13. That's good. That's what we want. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't look like here it tells you if it's full text or not. So I'm guessing it only shows you if it's a citation or an abstract. But you can also click on this guy to figure it out or just click on the article. And this looks pretty full. So this is an article that can be used. Um, some things that Gail can do for you is you can save this to your OneDrive or to your Google Drive. But again, I would also suggest downloading it uh, somehow. So then you have this article and you can go back to it. One cool thing I'd like to show you is about testing. So if you're looking for the SATs, the ACTs, the LSTAT, there is a database that can help you with that. So we're going to go to EBSCO. And if there's enough interest in this, I can make a quick link to it. We're going to go to Learning Express Library. Here, you can see that you have test preps for just about anything, which is pretty cool. I have had some questions about how to use this database page. Um, I, If this is not working for some of you, I can most certainly change how it is. Um, I can create a usability test and see what's best for you guys. In the making of this website, this is what was easiest for me to do. So this has databases as well as open resources mixed in. If you're looking for a specific database, just type in the name. So let's see. I want to use Wiley. So 
So I'm just going to type in the name. I'm going to type in Gail. And here it will come up with all of the databases associated with Gale. It'll also, also show you on the side that they are associated with Gale. So even though this does not say Gale, it is part of Gale. Um, I also have that in ProQuest. Again, these things might not say ProQuest, but on the side, it has that they are associated with ProQuest. Now, let's say I am looking for something that has to do with nursing. So I can start typing in nursing, and we've got five hits. Other things that you can look on the website, um, we've got ebooks, not a lot, but if you have any requests, we can most certainly look into it and maybe even purchase it. Free resources. This is what I was talking about, about those open resources. So these are not necessarily paid databases or um, websites, but there's something that would probably be helpful to you. Uh, here they're listed. It's got a summary of what they are. Over here in newspapers and magazines, we've got all of the online versions that we subscribe to or the free stuff. So if you look up here, we've got in the news, um, we've got Arkansas, we've got ASU in the news, and then entertainment because who doesn't like a little bit of gossip? Then we've got our newspapers and magazines. Some of them require logins, which I have listed down below. Um, if you cannot log in with these usernames and passwords, it might be because someone else is already using the account. So you might need to wait a little bit. Um, I think the accounts are only available to two people at a time. So you just have to take turns using the account if you want to read certain articles and you get a paywall. LibGuides. So I have created and am still working on some library guides for your selected area. Um, if you are just doing something in general and don't know how to start researching, you can click start here. And it just gives you some tips, tricks, steps on how to research. Um, I tried to make it as entertaining as possible with some videos as well, because I know reading can be boring. Or if you have your major, I have a decent amount of information. So you've got information about the books, maybe ebooks that we have. I also have information about how the sub how the class of criminal justice is broken down. So the Library of Congress, which is how we catalog our books, goes by alphabet. K stands for law. And then from there, it goes K, A, K, B, K, C, all the way down. You get the picture. Each of those subclasses uh, represent something else. So as you can see, if you go down, it's different types of law. So if you're looking for Canadian law and you're not really quite sure what book you want to use, you can come into the library and just browse the KE section and maybe you'll find a book that you like. Here, you can see all the databases that have links containing criminal justice. So I've sort of done the work for you where I went through each database and found resources on criminal justice. I also have other, which I think may help you. So I've got the Arkansas Bar Association, local government, just in case you're doing a paper 
on something on Arkansas itself. Local archives. We're going through the process at the library where we are scanning everything in our archives and putting it online. Um, we're trying to organize it as best as possible. Some things might not be in the right spot. If you run across that, please let us know and we'll put it in the right spot. Um, some of the stuff isn't labeled properly, so we're, we're just doing our best guess. Um, for example, we've got pamphlets. So if you were in Phi Theta Kappa, this might be interesting to you. History. Or we have old photo albums, which I really enjoyed when I was scanning these. It looks like everybody had a lot of fun. Maybe we can do something like this, you know, in the, in the present, now that COVID's over. But it's just interesting to see how people were back in the 90s. You might even find, like, some people that still work here in these pictures. You don't know. But it's very entertaining. The hairstyles are great. Uh, but there's all, all sorts of things in the archive section. There's pictures to annual reports, award ceremony pamphlets, um, radio spotlights, a lot of stuff about nursing. Uh, so I would highly suggest, you know, looking at it. And maybe if you're doing a paper about local stuff, you can use this as a resource. E-comics. This, I am trying to build up our comic book graphic novel collection, and one of the things that's sort of getting popular are zines or e-comics, which are basically comic books online or magazines online. So here are some free comic books that I have received access to, and uh, if anybody is curious or wants to read something, here it is. Uh, this is more experimental. If it takes off, that's great. If not, we might do away with e-comics. Digital comments. This is a super cool resource. I highly recommend it. This is an example of an OER, an open educational resource. As you can see, it's an open access, powered by scholars, published by universities. Um, and information in the center will tell you different facts about where all of these articles come from. And down below, it explains some stuff too. So these are papers, um, thesis, anything that you can think of that was published by a university. So this is a very good scholarly, um, scholarly place to find things. So if we look here, what do we want to explore? Hmm. Let's explore Okay, let's explore health and medicine. Here, it's sort of like ProQuest where it narrows it down little by little. So we clicked on medicine and health, and now we can get down a little deeper. So I'm gonna do mental and social health. It's so cool when it gets smaller. So now we can see all the papers that were written by topic. So if you are 
wanting to write something in this field, you might want to write something about maybe animal assisted therapy because that's not a very big subject that's been written about yet. But if you want to write about psychiatric and mental health, that might be an oversaturated market. So let's see what's going on in the animal therapy world. All right, we've got 63 full text articles. And as you can see, they're listed by the author and also the university that the author wrote it when they were attending or worked at. Um, the last thing I wanted to show you is Overdrive. Overdrive is our new audiobook platform. Here, you can listen to any books that we have purchased. Um, if there is a book that you want and we don't have, let us know and we will most likely purchase it. I would like for this collection to become bigger than it is. Uh, we don't have a lot of main titles because I don't know what people are reading. I don't know if I should be purchasing Harry Potter books or if I should be doing John Grisham. I need y'all's advice on this. But here, this is one of my favorite books. You can see the uh, summary and you can click on details and whatnot. Um, sometimes there is a sample that you can listen to down here. Oh, it's it moved right there. Uh, and you can see how many copies we have. So one of one. So if someone has this checked out, the other person has to wait. How long? That person has to wait 21 days. So whoever checks out these audiobooks have 21 days to listen to the whole thing. And then it automatically gets returned. If someone else has it on hold, the borrow will change to hold it'll automatically get checked out to that next person. So if there's no one in the queue, then you can uh, reborrow the book and finish it up. Uh, but if it's if there's a line, you just gotta wait. There's also um, a couple of eBooks in this collection. I don't necessarily like ebooks because staring at a screen all day makes my eyes go cross-eyed, but if you guys want an ebook, I am most certainly open to purchasing it. Uh, like I said, this is a free service. You will download the Libby app. Uh, Libby is Overdrive's new service, so Libby is Overdrive. Um, you just download the app, you put in your card information, your ID information, and you get connected to us. There's also a lot of other public libraries that use this service that you can add on as well. So the more libraries that you attach to your account, the more books and the bigger the collection you have to look at. Uh, so I know the Garland County Library uses it. I'm not sure about the Hot Springs Malvern Library, but like I said, it's a really cool service. Uh, you can compare it to Audible, only this is free. So you don't have to pay a monthly fee, you don't have to pay per use, it's all on us. So again, if you want a book, an audiobook, whatever, please request it. And there should be an option on the website to request a book. Um, let's see. So they couldn't find any Harry Potter books in our collection. However, they have a couple of recommended books. So here, if this is what you are looking for, you can click on recommend. It'll get sent to us and we'll review and most likely we will uh, purchase it unless it's too expensive. 
then you will get an email saying that the book is now available for use and you can read to your heart's content. So that's pretty simple and that anybody can use it. Faculty, staff, um, if your kids want to use it, just put all your information on whatever they use and they are more than welcome to use it. Uh, it's a really cool resource and I hope that it gets kicked off the ground soon. But that's about it. Um, if you have any other questions, please let me know. My name is Irene and I'd be more than happy to help you with any research needs or uh, guidance on how to use the website.